All right, playing harmonica is hard work, and the funny thing is, work is exactly what we're going to study today. Yes, we'll study a second application of definite integration, which is to calculate the work in physics due to variable forces. All right, so what is the work in physics? Roughly speaking, the work is quantifying the amount of effort that's required to push or pull an object. But it has a very precise definition in physics. So the easiest case is when you're applying a constant force on an object, and in this case, the work is simply given by the force times the distance that the object moves. So that's very simple. But what about the case where the force is variable? Suppose that you're moving an object and that the force applied on the object changes as you move the object. How can you calculate the work? Well, this is what we're going to see in this video. So we're going to work through two examples where we're going to calculate the work for variable forces using definite integration. All right, so for my first problem, I'm going to consider a particle that's moving from a point x equals to 1 to another point x equals to 3, subject to a variable force, so a force that depends on the position x. How can I calculate the work done? I can't use the standard formula here because the force is not constant, so the work is not equal to the force times the distance. So how can I calculate it? Well, the idea will be to slice the problem into manageable slices. So more precisely, instead of thinking of moving the particle all the way from 1 to 3 at once, what I'll do is move the particle through small steps. And for each small step, I can assume that the force is constant uh, on this step, and then I can calculate the work done for each step separately. And then that will give me a good approximation of the work, but if I send the number of steps to be infinite, or the width of each step to be zero, I get a precise calculation of the work. All right, so let's do that more rigorously. So I'm going to call the left end point x0 as usual and the right end point xn, where n is the number of steps. And then I'll introduce x1, x2, and so on. And the width of each step I'll take to be equal and equal to delta x. And the first thing I want to calculate is the work required to move through one step. So in other words, to move through, say, xi minus 1 to x I. All right, so what is the work done? Well, on each step, I can assume that the force is constant because I'm going to take these steps to be very small. And I'll take the force to be equal to the value of the force for the right endpoint of the step. And then, well, the distance for each step is always the same because I take the step all the steps to have equal width. So the work required uh, to go through one step, so from xi minus 1 to xi, will be equal in this case to the force times the distance. And then by summing all these uh, different works, so all the steps, I get a good approximation of the work done as being the Riemann sum, so the sum from i equals 1 to n of the work for each step, which is the force times the distance. All right, this is cool, but this is just an approximation of the work. But uh, how can I calculate the actual value of the work? Well, as usual, to get a precise value of w, what we'll do is take a limit. So we'll take the limit as we send the number of steps to be infinity, or the width of each step to be zero. That will give us a precise calculation of the work. So mathematically, the work will be given as the limit as n goes to infinity of the Riemann sum. But of course, we recognize that as a definite integral. This is just the definite integral from the left end point, which in this case was 1, to the right end point, 3, of the force times dx. And we're given a particle equation for the force, so all we have to do now is evaluate this definite integral. So we first find an antiderivative you can easily find to be x cubed over 3 plus x squared. And then we evaluate using fundamental theorem of calculus, so we'll get 27 over 3 plus 9 minus 1 third plus 1, which basically simplifies to, so this is 27 over 3 is 9, so 9 plus 9, 18 minus 1, so that's 17 minus 1 third which, if I'm not mistaken, will give you 50 over 3. 
And now it's important you uh, add back the units. So here the force was given in newtons and the distance in meters. So the work here will be in newtons times meters. All right, so what we've done here is calculate the work done for variable force. And what we've seen is that by slicing the problem into very, very small steps, we ended up uh, giving a, a precise formula for the work as a definite integral, which we can then evaluate to get the value of the work. All right, so my second problem has a slightly different flavor. So a 200 kilogram cable is 100 meter long and hangs vertically from the top of a building. How much work is required to lift the cable to the top of the building? So I have a building, nice windows, beautiful building, and I have a cable which hangs from the top of the building. What do I know about the cable? I know that the length of the cable is 100 meters and that its total mass is 200 kilograms. And let me introduce some notation here, so I'll fix an axis, I'll call this the x-axis, whose origin is at the top. All right, so how can I calculate the work required to lift the cable? The problem here is not that the force is uh, variable, because the force is just a gravitational force, which is constant. The problem is that, depending on where I stand on the cable, I'll be lifted different distances. Right? If, I'm, if I look at the end of the cable, it will be lifted 100 meters, while the middle of the cable will be lifted only 50 meters, and so on. So if I wanted to use the formula uh, force times distance for the work, I wouldn't be able to do, it, to do it because I don't know where the distance is. It depends where I am on the cable. So how can I calculate the work? Well, the idea will be the same as always. I'm going to slice the problem into manageable slices. And here what this means is that I'm going to slice my cable into small segments of cable. So let's take that particular segment here between xi minus 1 and xi. So the width or the length of each segment will be taken to be the same, delta x. And then I'm going to calculate the work required to lift each segment to the top of the building. And I'm going to assume that all the points on a given segment will be lifted by exactly the same amount. So they're all going to be lifted uh, by the distance xi. Now this is just an approximation, but in the end I'll send the number of segments to be infinite and the length of each segment to go to zero, so that will become a precise calculation of the work. All right, so what I want to calculate first is the work required to lift a given segment. So say to lift the segment x minus, xi minus 1 to xi. So to calculate the work, I need two things. I need the force and the distance. So the force here on that line segment is just the gravitational force. It's going to be the, the mass of this segment of the cable times g. Uh, I could replace g here by 9.8 meters per second square, but I'll just leave it as g, because why not? And I need to calculate the mass of this particular segment of cable. What is this? Well, this is going to be the linear density, or mass density, of the cable times the length of the cable, which is delta x, times g. And what is the linear density? Well, I know the total mass of the cable and the total length of the cable, so the mass density here is just the total mass divided by the total length. right? So I'm going to get rid of units here and just reintroduce them at the end. So I'll get 2g delta x for the force applied on a given segment of cable. All right, and then what is the distance that I need to lift this cable, this segment of the cable? So I'll take the distance to be xi. So in other words, I'm assuming that all the points on uh, the segment of cable between xi minus 1 and xi are lifted by the exact same distance, and I take this to be xi. And then the work required to lift that particular segment of cable will be the force times the distance, so it becomes 2g xi delta x. All right, and then to get an approximation of the total work, all I have to do is add up the work uh, required to lift each of these segments. So if I uh, divide in my cable into n small segments, I get a sum from i equals 1 to n of this expression, so 2g xi delta x. And finally, to get a true calculation of the total work, I take the limit where I send the number of segments to be infinite, and that will give me a precise calculation of the total work required. But we know what this is. This is just the definition of a definite integral, so I end up with a definite integral here of the expression 2gx dx, and I need to know from where to where I'm integrating. 
So in the x coordinate, the cable starts at x equals to 0 and ends at x equals to 100. So here I'm integrating between 0 and 100. All right, so I've translated the problem now into uh, a definite integral, so all I have to do is calculate it. So I use the fundamental theorem of calculus. 2g is a constant, so I pull it out. Antiderivative of x is x squared over 2. I need to evaluate that between 0 and 100. All right, so the 2s cancel, so I end up with g times 100 squared, which is 10,000. And that gives me the final uh, calculation for the work. Now I could reintroduce units here, uh, and I would get for the final amount. So if I replace g by 9.8 here, and I uh, reintroduce units, this will become the work in newtons times meters. And that's the total work required to lift the cable. So you see here, it was slightly different. The force wasn't variable. That wasn't the problem. It was the distance that was changing depending on where I was on the cable. But in the end, we rewrote uh, the work as a definite integral. And then all you have to do to calculate it is use the fundamental theorem of calculus.